both PCA and LTA are linear transformation techniques. However, PCA is an unsupervised while LDA is a supervised dimensionality reduction technique. PCA has no concern with class labels. In simple words, PCA summarizes the feature set without relying on the output. PCA tries to find the directions of the maximum variance in the data set. In a large feature set, there are many features that are merely duplicate of the other features or have a high correlation with the other features. Such features are basically redundant and can be ignored. The role of PC is to find such highly correlated or duplicate features and to come up with a new feature set where there is a minimum correlation between the features or in another word, feature set with maximum variance between features. Since the variance between the feature set uh, dependent upon the output, therefore PCA does not take the output labels into account. Unlike PCA, LDA tries to reduce the dimensions of the feature set while retaining information that discriminates output classes. LDA tries to find decision boundary around each cluster of a class. It then projects the data into new dimensions in a way that clusters are separate from each other as possible and the individual elements within a cluster are as close to the centroid of the cluster as possible. The new dimensions are wrapped on the basis of their ability to maximize the distance between clusters and minimize the distance between the data points with the cluster and their centroids. The new dimensions from the linear discriminants are of the feature set. Like PCA, the Secret Learn library contains built-in classes for performing LDA on the data set. In this video, we will apply LDA on the IRIS data sets. The IRIS data set is available uh, in the internet. You can download it from, uh, from internet. Let's start. Once a data set is loaded into a Pandas data frame object, the first step is to divide data set into features and corresponding labels and then divide the resultant data set into training and test tests. Uh, next, I will write the script for that. The above script assigns the first four columns of the data set that is the feature set into x variable while the values in the fifth column that is labels are assigned to the y variable. Next stop script divides the data into training and test sets. Uh, next, is, next is feature scaling as was the case with uh, you know uh, principal component analysis we discussed we need to perform feature scaling for linear discriminant uh, discriminant analysis lda2 uh, for that the script i will write the script for that It requires only four lines of code to perform LDA with scikit-learn, the linear discriminant, discriminant analysis class of the sklearn.discriminant underscore analysis library can be used to perform LDA in Python. Let's write the script for that. So in this script about linear discriminant analysis class is imported as LDA. Like PZA, we have to pass the value for the n underscore components parameter of the LDA, which refers to the number of linear discriminants that we want to retrieve. In this case, we set the n underscore components to 1. Since we first want to check the performance of our classifier with a single linear discriminant, finally we execute the fit and transform method to actually retrieve the linear discriminants.
See, in the case of LDA, the transform method takes two parameters, x underscore train and y underscore train. However, in the case of PZA, the transform method only requires one parameter that is x underscore train. This reflects the fact that LDA takes the output class labels into account while selecting the linear discriminants while PZA doesn't depend upon the output labels. Next is training and making predictions. Since we want to compare the performance of LDA with one linear discriminant to the performance of PZA with one principal component, we will use the same random forest classifier that we used to evaluate performance of PZA reduced algorithms. For that, let me write this code for that. Uh, next is to evaluating the performance. As always, um, the last step is to evaluate the performance of the algorithm with the, with the help of a confusion matrix and find the accuracy of the prediction. For that, let me write the script for that. So you could see the output here. You can see that with the one linear discriminant, the algorithm achieved an accuracy of 100% which is greater than the accuracy achieved with one principal component, which was, you know, 93.33 percentage. So, PZA versus LDA, what to choose for dimension, dimensionality reduction? In case of uniformly distributed data, LDA almost always perform better than PZA. However, if the data is highly skewed, Irregular, irregularly distributed, highly skewed means irregularly distributed, then it is advised to use PZA since LDA can be biased towards the majority class. Finally, it is beneficial that PZA can be applied to labeled as well as unlabeled data since it doesn't rely on the output labels. On the other, on the other hand, LDA requires, requires output classes for finding linear discriminants and hence requires labeled data. For more info on how you can utilize 